Preparing for the end of a person's life can be a thoughtful, supportive, and beautiful process. When we're surrounded by the people we love, when we're surrounded by connection, when we're surrounded by meaning, then a good death happens. One of the things that we see um, very often is that the, that the resident or the patient is ready to go and the family is not ready to let them go. But if we can help the family look at the death from the point of view of the person that's dying rather than from their own personal selfish wish to keep them with us, that, that helps ease the pain. In the CARES End of Life Dementia Care Training Program, you will tailor what you've learned through all the CARES programs for those whose journey is coming to an end. Good morning, Tony. How are you? Doing well. How about you? Well, I'm doing pretty good. How did you just get a good night's sleep last night? It's just fine. It was fine, okay. I'm going to turn you on your side, on the other side. You're on the on the right side now, we'll turn you on the left side, okay? Okay. okay. You had company, I understand, yesterday. I did have a little bit, yeah. Did they order pizza? Well, but what happened was... Uh, so yeah. that was a great example of connecting with the yeah. resident. It took a little bit extra time, but I could tell it made a difference to him, and I think you enjoyed it as well. Yeah. And... Uh, is that better? Hmm? She's always on the bed. She never get up. Patty, can you say something to me? You know I love you. Is that why I'm here? Hmm? When I went there, she was kind of, oh no, I want to sleep. She has a funny face, like something was going on on her. And sometimes she can talk to you, sometimes she doesn't want to talk. So you have to figure out what is going on. I am really sorry to have to tell you this, but your mom had a difficult evening last night. We checked her oxygen levels and they were low, so we started her on oxygen. Her temperature is elevated this morning, and I have a call out to the doctor to see if we should do a chest x-ray. Oh dear, what do you think happened? She's been doing so well lately. Most people when they're dying of Alzheimer's die because of just nothing. They just eat less and less because they're not able to coordinate the swallowing. They don't generally feel hunger or thirst. They just slowly decline until they're bedridden and they don't starve. People really worry that they're going to starve. So if you're a caregiver watching somebody dying and you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, they're not getting any food, actually they're taking a very peaceful path. Funny stories are really a great um, grief lifter because you can only be in grief for so many minutes and then you really need to have a pause and a refreshment and that helps the families. I worked for an agency for a while and when someone would pass, we would sit down and have wine and just sit and have a memory of that person. Each individual that worked with that person, you know, I'll just go home and cheers to that person, you know, rest in peace. You had your fight, you know, and you made a difference in my life.